What's up, millionaires? This is Alexander Victor here with your moment of financial zen. And today I'm going over the four steps to financial freedom. I'm going to wing this one, so grab some notes and let me know how I did at the end of the video, okay? No script on this one. All right, first step, first step to financial freedom is getting budget right. Get your budget right, okay? You have to tr be able to track your spending to know what you're spending your money on. A lot of us go through day by day, living paycheck to paycheck, and you know we feel like we need more money in order to cover the expenses that we have without actually looking at what those expenses are and if we could get rid of them or not, okay? A lot of the expenses, once you do a budgeting plan, you, you could actually write down and take the time to see what you spend your money on, a lot of the things that you'll see is just unnecessary, okay? Uh, do you really need a 400 channel uh, package uh, to, to watch all the channels that you think you want to watch? It's probably only five or six of them. Okay, can you can you compensate or can you deal with just only having Netflix? Do you really need that super high speed internet or do you really need the top of the line phone? Okay, there's some things that you can do or do without. Do you really need to eat out every other day? Write down your budget, all the expenses that you have, balance them against your your income. And then see where you're spending the most money and ask yourself, do you really need to spend this much money? You know, take the time to take out those unnecessary things. A lot of the things that we do, if you go into the stores, you'll see all of the colorful stuff, the snacks and stuff by the register if you ever go through the store. Those things are put there for a reason. Those are impulse buys, okay? You'll start to see once you list out your budget that a lot of things that you are buying are impulse buys, okay? Um, try to stay away from those impulse buys. If you want to buy something, write it down after you have your budget for the month. Write down all the things that you want to buy next month. And if, as long as it fits in your budget, you can buy it. Now, if you run across something and you want to buy something in the store and it's not on your budget, don't buy it. Wait till next month's budget. And about nine times out of ten, what happens is by the time next month comes around, you don't want it anymore. Okay, it's a funny thing how that works. Okay, you you realize how how these impulse buys you know influence you to buy things at the last minute that you didn't need. Okay, uh, so get a hold of your spending. Okay, see where your money is going, and you'll be surprised on how much stuff that you don't need at the end of the day. Okay, once you get your control, you're able to control your spending. You see where it's going. You'll be able to hold on to money just a little bit longer. Okay, long enough to 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 build up uh, some at least a little bit of savings. So that you can move on to step two, which is paying off your debts. Okay. Now, I know a lot of you guys are here for investing advice, but the, the truth is you need to get rid of those debts because uh, a lot of the credit card debt, uh, student loans that you're dealing with, um, a lot of debt that you have, personal loans especially, uh, they have a very high interest rate. Okay. Now, you can get into the stock market, but the truth is the average person on the stock market makes about 7% per year. And if you are falling at or below that 7% and, you know, you can have your money on stock market, but your credit card debt is at 12%, well, you're going to need another 4% just to break even, okay? So pay off those debts first, all right? Uh, get rid of that extra bill that is really charging you extra money and that you don't need to be charged. It's something that you don't need. You need to get rid of your debt as soon as possible before you move on to the next step, okay? The next step is once you get rid of all your debt, you want to go ahead and move into, get yourself a retirement account, a 401k, all right? Uh, you're young now, you're able now, but you're not always going to be able to do the things that you want to do in the future if you work forever. So you need to set yourself up. Um, the sooner you set up a 401k, or for my military folk, a TSP, the sooner you set it up, the better. There's a lot of benefits. I'm not going to hit them all right now, but essentially, okay, so you have a traditional 401k, which is your account is tax advantage, which means uh, it goes into the account before it is taxed. Uh, this is beneficial, especially when you take the money, all the money that you get since it's pre-tax, you can use it all in, on the account. And theoretically, when you when you pull the money out, then it's taxed when you pull it out. Now, there's different techniques that I'll go mo a little bit more into retirement accounts uh, later. I'm not going to hit all of them now, but just so that you're aware of it, I'm, I'm just going to hit that now, 401k. So you have your, your traditional 401k, which is taxed before the money goes into the account. And you have your Roth 401k, which is taxed after, after, sorry, 
Did I fucking... I think I got it backwards. Traditional text before it goes in and then... Oh my god. I gotta look it up. Fuck it. Uh, anyways, one of the two. Okay. <laughs> what They're opposite of each other. One is taxed before, one is taxed when it comes out. Okay. Actually, I want to say that the Roth... The Roth IRA is the one that account that it stands for individual retirement account. In short, get a retirement account. A retirement account is going to help you plan your life from 65 to death, essentially. Okay. Once you don't have to worry about yourself, when you get older, life becomes a little bit easier. Plus, you really want to take advantage of that compound interest effect. Okay. It's going to be a time once you about 10 years, once you have your account for about 10 years, where the compound interest is going to be so powerful if you have enough compound interest. It's going to be so powerful that it's going to be able to return a higher percentage back into your account more than you can contribute to it. Additionally, another reason why you want to get 401k, a retirement account, is because, you know, when it comes around for you time for you to do your taxes, you are able to get savers credit, which gets you one to two thousand dollars, depending on if you're married or not, and how much money you make credit extra that goes back to you it's free money so take it contribute the the highest amount to your retirement account which is most cases like six thousand dollars or so and then you get the, the tax credit at the end of the day which you can drop into your robin hood or whatever retirement account that you use on the side take advantage of those retirement accounts for tsp all right these are for my military folks and guys who work for the government okay you definitely want to get, to get into that tsp now i know especially i'm talking to my navy guys here uh, when you're in boot camp, you were told that get into the G fund. G fund is the safest account. Okay, well I'm telling you, get the get the fuck out of the G fund. Get out right now. You are missing out on serious gains. And I did this pra practice with a lot of guys that I work with. You know, you take the gains. If you look at the ten year average for the G fund, the ten year average for the G fund is about two and a half percent. Where if you look at the C and S fund, the ab the, the ten year average is about thirteen percent. And the difference between 2 and 13% after a span of about 35 years is the difference between a couple hundred thousand dollars and multi-millions of dollars, okay? So you need to go ahead and make the switch and make the switch now to the CNS fund. And I'll go over this more in the future as well in a different video, okay? And uh, the last thing that you want to do, uh, step four to financial freedom, is go ahead and since you got... 65 to death covered you need to cover from whenever you're going to retire from your normal job uh, you know whatever it may be for us military guys you know if you do 20 years in then you can retire after that and then worry about from that age to 65 and you can live off your investments if you do it right and actually uh retire early doing something that you want to do instead of uh slaving away doing working for other people and stuff like that you want to get away from that type of mentality you're not really happy doing that you need to really enjoy your life yolo right fourth thing you want to do is you get into stocks okay take advantage of the stock market it's been crazy over the past decade and this next decade after since you know we've had this uh covid crash uh the next decade will be even crazier okay so because we have so much money is printed it's, it's going to inflate the stock market and you really want to you do not want to wait you do not want to wait for this hop on it now and and ride it up okay we're, we're looking at another longest bull market ever because of all the money that was printed so get on it and of course i'm going to give provide you guys with stock market advice in the future you want to get on those growth stocks you don't want to get on those dividend stocks especially if you're young and you're not retiring soon you want to get on those growth stocks uh, you can always, you know, take out the money from the growth stocks once you get high enough and go ahead and drop that into dividend stocks because the dividend stocks don't raise an equity very high and get the benefit of the dividends on the back end. OK, but hop in those growth stocks now and raise your equity exponentially. And then if you want, you could drop on the, the train for the dividend stocks. The dividend stocks, to be honest with you, the dividend stocks are really for those financial institutions. It, it benefits you only if you have a ridiculous amount of money and a reliable source of income these guys you gotta think about it. if you're in a position of a financial institution and you're managing people's money and and they can essentially sue you if you fuck up their money uh then you want to have something that has low risk but still provides a return and the best answer to that is dividend stocks so those dividend stocks are there for those financial institutions if you are a retail investor find the growth stocks 
those are really for you and you need to take advantage of them, okay? All right, of course, more to follow in the future, but I just want to hit you guys with this four-step financial course of freedom. Uh, real quick, just to touch on some basis. Again, skip uh, script-free, so if you liked it, let me know. If you're not, then I'll go back to scripting it out for you guys, all right? There is a fifth step of prestige level, and that's options trading, penny stocks, stuff like that. Um, that takes a lot of skill. It's, it's a lot of risk, but with more risk comes more reward. There, uh, you know, uh, you'll see me jokingly occasionally uh, call out uh, Wall Street bets, but those guys are either really fucking stupid or fucking geniuses. Right now, as I'm speaking, they're going through the GME, the GameStop squeeze, and I mean, games the epic proportions, games the epic proportions over there. All right, and I'd much rather be on the Wall Street bet side than the finance institution side because those guys have been stealing money from us for years. All right, let me know how you think about this format of video, how you think it's better. If it's not, let me know. It's invest in yourself. Your future depends on it.